Late in the 10th century, the Vikings settled in Greenland. They found fertile fields and navigable waters teeming with codfish and seals. Generations had come to call this land their home. So at the first, they were farmers and settled on the large land, and they, they must have been very thrilled with the land they found. Back then, it was warmer. There was more trees. It was a very good farming land, very fertile, very green. Rumors of this wonderful land must have spread, so you had more inhabitants. We think of this as a rough life, but they have had fashionable clothing and they have had time to play. It's been tough, but they have had good times as well. The Viking communities in Greenland were vibrant and thriving by the year 1100. Within a few hundred years, they were all wiped out. The reason? Climate change. The climate changed. That's a fact. Everybody knows that. So it was getting very hard to be a farmer. And, well, they didn't get enough hay for the animals and the animals were freezing and starving, so the animals died. And when the animals die, the people die. Around the year 1350, um, representative of the Bishop Regada visited Western Settlement, and he wrote home and told that there's no one here. By the end of the 15th century, Greenland had grown so cold that all of the Viking people who had lived there for generations were completely gone. They must have wondered, what happened to our climate system? I mean, did we do something to cause this? That would be really, really useful to learn from the Vikings' example. How do we go about coping with big natural changes in the sun and the earth climate system? How do humans cope with natural changes in the climate system? As scientists study the past, they're applying this knowledge to the changes experienced in the Earth's climate today. They are finding a natural cycle that modulates between cold periods and warm periods. Climate is not a constant. We go through periods where it's much warmer, where it's much colder, we go through periods where it's wetter and drier. So the one thing we can say about climate in the future is that it will change. As Greenland became cooler, other parts of the world were experiencing this cool down as well. In England, the Thames River began to freeze over during harsh winters. So did canals and waterways in the Netherlands. The Earth's climate was entering what scientists now call the Little Ice Age. The condition is quite severe. In Western Europe, you can see people were actually praying in a church while the glacier is advancing. Essentially, are praying that, please, God, don't let this ice come in and then ruin our village. The Little Ice Age is part of a series of climate change eras that have been scientifically identified. In Europe, there was a warming period at the height of the Roman Empire, followed by cooling during the Dark Ages. The climate again warmed during the medieval period, followed by the Little Ice Age during the Renaissance. The Little Ice Age ended at about 1850. So over the past 150 or so years, we've been in a cycle where the Earth has generally been warming. This current climate cycle is what most people call global warming. Scientists have identified the recurring patterns of cooling and heating in the Earth's climate. But what causes this cycle? The sun is the key ingredient to climate. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the energy on the Earth that goes into the climate system comes from the sun. The sun, of course, in terms of its light energy output, is probably the only true external driver of the Earth climate system because there is no other forces on Earth that will supply that amount of energy for the, for the air to move around, the ocean current to move around, or trees to grow. So there is no doubt that the sun is the main driver and supplier of energy to the Earth uh, weather and climate system. The sun's magnetism has a profound effect on the Earth. The sun's magnetic fields experience regular natural cycles. Sound familiar? When sunspot activity is compared to temperature changes over the same period, a remarkable correlation appears. Radiation from the sun seems to contribute to variations in temperature and climate on Earth. 
This is important when trying to understand climate patterns. The sun's natural cycles are a primary driver of our climate's natural cycles. You have such a strong indication that there is this close relationship between how much the energy output from the sun changes and then how much the, the temperature changes. What about the role that carbon dioxide or CO2 plays in the Earth's climate? Is the warming being caused by human-generated carbon dioxide? Is it the sun? Or is it a combination of factors? Humans do affect our environment, and one of the ways they do that is change the constituents in the atmosphere. I think the biggest driver is going to be other natural fluctuations, and carbon dioxide plays a small role in that. The modern warming of Greenland has been going on since 1850, long before human-generated CO2 was entering the atmosphere. Looking at modern warming in general, a consistent pattern can be seen. With the best available records of temperature and atmospheric CO2 of the past 650,000 years, one finds that the Earth's temperature always rises first, followed by a rise in carbon dioxide. The warmer Earth uh, gives birth to more vegetation, which in turn has a more active carbon cycle. And so as a result, carbon dioxide may in fact follow the temperature change as opposed to being a leading indicator. Published papers clearly, clearly shows that it is always the temperature rises first by at least several hundred years to a few thousand years. And then the carbon dioxide curve responds and it follows. So it, it is a very clear scientific consensus on this issue. In other words, a warmer Earth leads to increased CO2 levels, not the other way around. That's an important realization, given the increased focus on human-generated CO2. Most of us still have that, that nagging question in us, you know. Yes, we have emitted all this carbon dioxide. Are we really, really melting all the ice cap? Or is it something even more powerful than that? I mean, meaning that could it be even the sun actually is doing it? The world's oceans offer another example. They contain large amounts of carbon dioxide. When the oceans heat up, that CO2 is released into the atmosphere. If you started to warm the surface ocean temperature, the ability for the ocean water to hold this carbon dioxide in the system is a lot less, meaning there will be more of this carbon dioxide effusing out. All of these theories are being explored by scientists to fully understand the complex factors that influence climate. However, the current political landscape endorses just one theory, that human-generated CO2 is the principal cause of global warming. Those views are indeed promoted by political bodies, which is uh, the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, and there appears to be a, a corrupted process, in my opinion, of, of the bodies, where I think science and scientists are being misused in a lot of ways. And these are all becoming really a war of words instead of war of evidence and science that troubles me. There's a science document which is really written by scientists for scientists. There's also a summary for policymakers. It's put together by policymakers and in many cases they go back to the scientists and say, can you change the science document to match our summary? We want to beef this up. We want to make it look worse. That's not the way science is done. They are clearly promoting the vision that if we do not cut our carbon dioxide emission, disaster, crisis, whichever bad connotation you can find, will come to Earth. So it is that kind of alarmism that appalls me as a scientist. What we have to remember is climate changes and climate fluctuates. And really, while we think humans have an impact on our environment, which we do, the global climate system is still far too complex to be simply affected by one change in one small component of it. There is no one in the world who would insist that everything is having to do with the sun. All we are trying to do is that there is this plausible picture of how the sun could cause the, some of the changes in the climate system. Uh, why not study it carefully? It's very, very difficult, in my opinion, to try to insist and suggest that carbon dioxide even as of today, when we emit this carbon dioxide, it's going to drive the climate system. It's a complete false picture, and there's no such a scientific basis to support that. So the idea of science is you're really supposed to be skeptical, 
So there's always a quest to verify what we know, to understand that we haven't made a mistake, and that we continue on and develop science. And if we've closed our mind, if we close the doors, we are now shutting ourselves out from the real truth, which is what science is all about after all. There is still much to learn about the many ways in which solar activity, the oceans, and other environmental variations may influence the Earth's climate. But the more scientists are allowed to do their research in an open dialogue, the more they will understand what is truly affecting the Earth's warming today. Find out more in Singer and Avery's book, Unstoppable Global Warming.